friends. Before we jump into the video, I wanted to say something. I really hope that this video doesn't come off as weird or braggy. That isn't what I'm trying to do at all. I just really love geeking out over Broadway and musicals. I mean, I think you probably know that by now, but I feel so insanely, insanely lucky that I've been able to see so many shows. I also wanted to thank you guys for hanging out with me and watching my videos because that's a big reason why I'm able to see these shows. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. Let's do this. Hey friends, what is up? It's me, Catherine, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I thought it would be fun to do a Playbill collection video. If you really love musical theater, Broadway, or internet cults, hit subscribe to join this Broadway musical theater internet cult. Question of the day, do you have any Playbills? And if so, which one is your favorite or your top favorites if you can't choose one? Let me know in the comments down below. So what I'm about to show you guys is actually not every single program from like every Every show I've seen because that would be absolutely ridiculous. I used to do that growing up. I would literally hang on to every program from every show I saw, a community theater, high school, summer camp, you name it. I'd hang it up on my wall of my bedroom so my entire room was covered from floor to ceiling in programs. Nowadays I don't do that in an effort to be a little less hoarder-y, but it's also a great idea if you're seeing a local production with kind of a longer run and you don't necessarily need to hang on to that playbill or if you don't want to. You can always recycle it, give it back to the usher or give it back to front of house staff. Of course, if you want to hang on to it for sentimental reasons, please do so. But just a thought and something to consider because I know not everyone knows about that. So uh, let's get this thing started. I guess I'll start with some of my framed playbills so I can put them back in the studio. If you guys didn't see on my second channel, I actually did an update all about my home studio slash office slash Broadway room, I guess. So first up is my autographed playbill for In the Heights. This was was the first national tour. I saw this at the Pantages Theater in Los Angeles. And I think this is so cool. I actually saw it either on July 3rd or July 4th, which is when In the Heights takes place. It's in that little three day window around 4th of July. So I actually saw the show like in real time. I did get to see Lin-Manuel Miranda as Usnavi. It was incredible. Next up, Bridges of Madison County. This show was so stunning, so like steamy. We met Kelly O'Hara. We were the only people at the stage door. I also just love the artwork on this playbill. I think it's so dreamy. Once on this island, circle in the square. I would probably put this in my top five productions of all time. Not top five shows, but top five productions, if that makes sense. What Michael R did with this material is groundbreaking. Oh, also I vlogged seeing this show on Broadway. If you guys don't know, I do have a vlog channel where I vlog my daily life and my theatery adventures. A ton of these shows that I'm going to be mentioning, I've actually vlogged seeing them. So I'll try my best to link all of those down below, or at least I'll link my vlog playlist. I'll do something. Check the description box if you want to see some fun show vlogs. It also might be kind of fun to like live vicariously right now when we won't be seeing any shows for a while. Might be kind of fun to relive that. I think I might go do that later. <laughs> this is Mean Girls at the August Wilson Theater. I got to see the full original cast with the exception of Gray Henson. He was out that night. It was Tony nomination season, so I actually got to see everybody right after they were nominated. Also, the night that I saw Mean Girls, I ran into so many of you guys. It was right when my YouTube channel was starting to like get serious for me. Ashley Park's performance as Gretchen is severely underrated. I have one more framed playbill, but I also have a non-framed version of that, so I will show it to you now, and that is Waitress. Waitress is really special for a number of reasons. One, I love that show so darn much. It is beautiful, stunning, incredible. I'm the Lady Gaga meme. I got to see this, I think, on its third preview or something, so I was like one of the first people to be able to see it on Broadway. I actually remember when I got the mug, like I got the merch mug, and I had everybody sign it. Kimiko Glenn was freaking out because she hadn't seen any of the merch yet, so she like called over Jesse and called over Kiela to like come look at this mug and it was like the coolest moment I felt really cool by association. I'm really nerding out right now. Oh, Spring Awakening at the Pantages Theater. I think this was the second national tour. George Salazar was in this. Oh my god. Lace 
Miserables. Les Miserables. Les Mis is one of my favorite shows of all time. I got to see this incredible cast. Ramin Karimlu, Will Swenson, Casey Levy. I love this artwork too. It's so beautiful. Something I thought I'd mention because I don't know where it is, is my falsettos program. I think the program just got misplaced. I'm now realizing that I'm actually missing a bunch of other playbills. In fact, here are all of the other ones that are probably wherever the falsettos playbill is. While I'm renovating my studio, I saw the National tour that went out last year. I have never ugly cried at a show so much. I was holding back audible sobs by the end of it. <laughs> Hamilton in San Francisco. I got to see this at the Orpheum Theater. I'm dying to see this show again. I was so blown away with how absolutely perfect that libretto is. I do want to do like a full review or sit down talking about Hamilton because when I got to see Hamilton, I was super sick. So I didn't stay up late doing like an immediate review. And I had to get up really early the next morning because I was walking the red carpet for the opening of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child at the Curran Theater. This show destroyed me, changed me, it truly leaves me speechless. I know a lot of people read the book or the script when it first came out and they weren't impressed, you need to see the show on stage. The technological capabilities of what they do with this show are worth the price of admission alone. The tech, the stunts, the special effects, it is mind blowing what they do, but it's also done in a way that it doesn't detract or distract from the story. It just enhances it. I'm dying to plan a trip back to San Francisco to go see it again. Definitely check out this vlog. It is so cool. I got to walk the red carpet. I got to go to opening night. I even got to go to like an exclusive VIP party. I hung out with the cast. Crazy night, crazy show. That's my rant on Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. <laughs> Anastasia at the Broadhurst Theater. I'm not kidding when I say I frequently ask myself, what would Christy Altimore do? I actually have one or two playbills from shows that I didn't see. And this is one of them. This is Kinky Boots autographed by Billy Porter and Stark Sands. This was given to me as a gift by a friend. The other two playbills, let me find those actually real quick. The Revival of Greece starring Laura Osnes. Hey oh, and I think Lindsay Mendez was in it too. The other playbill I have, which I just realized is still in my studio because I have it up as a decoration, is Newsies autographed by Jeremy Jordan. Kiss Me Kate with Kelly O. Hera. Again, I love Kelly. This is the third time that I got to see her in a show. I love Kiss Me Kate. This production was beautiful. Be More Chill actually invited me to come see the show and they gave me a backstage tour, which was so cool. Nora Goodmother. It's like night. me. No! Yeah. This was right when Be More Chill was at its peak. It was so insane to experience that audience, the energy that that fandom had for Be More Chill was so cool to witness. Okay, yeah, I really need to go through these a lot faster. I'm so sorry. National tour of Miss Saigon at the Hollywood Pantages Theater. Adam's Family on Broadway. Hades Town at the Walter Kerr Theater on Broadway. Le Caja Fall at the Long Acre Theater on Broadway. World premiere of Soft Power at the Amundsen Theater in Los Angeles. Billy Elliot at the Imperial Theater on Broadway. Oklahoma at Circle in the Square on Broadway. The Prom. Waitress at the Pantages Theater. The Promises Promises at the Broadway Theater on Broadway. Broadway. National tour of the play that goes wrong over at the Amundsen Theater. The recent national tour of Fiddler on the Roof. Something Rotten at the St. James Theater. I got to see this with the full original cast. I also got to see Something Rotten for a second time when I saw the first national tour over at the Amundsen Theater. Book of Mormon at the Pantages Theater here in Hollywood. That would have been the first national tour, so I want to say Gavin Creel. Gavin Creel! If Then at the Pantages Theater in Hollywood, this is the first national tour, but almost the full Broadway cast went on tour and I got to see them in this. Once at the Bernard B. Jacobs Theater on Broadway, I got to see Kristen Milotti in this, which was so neat. Oh, here's Newsies from when I saw it on Broadway at the Nederlander Theater. Here's War Horse at the Pantages Theater. I think I saw this when I was like 14. I went with my school. Another Phantom of the Opera at the Majestic Theater. This is the 25th anniversary anniversary of Phantom Autographed by Sierra Bogus because she came back for two weeks to play Christine on Broadway and I got to see her and it was incredible. Two playbills of Hello Dolly. This one is from the Schubert Theater on Broadway and this one is from the Pantages Theater in Hollywood. This was the national tour of this production. In this production, I got to see Gavin Creel, Kate Baldwin, Victor Garber, Bernadette Peters. And then over at the Pantages, I got to see Betty Buckley and she was 
brilliant. She was so funny. This also holds a special place in my heart because this is the first red carpet I ever got to walk for an opening night for a musical. The revival of She Loves Me. Oh my god. Laura Benanti, Zach Levi, Jane Krakowski, Gavin Creel. That show was stunning. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice at the Winter Garden Theater. That set design is drool worthy. It is stunning. The nice folks over at Beetlejuice invited me over to see the show. I got to sit right next to the Jonas Brothers, which was insane. I have a whole vlog about seeing Beetlejuice and my review on it on my vlog channel, so definitely check that one out. That's one of my favorite vlogs. You smell unbelievable. <laughs> Sweeney Todd is the first off-Broadway production I ever saw. It was immersive. You were in a pie shop. Most of the show was like performed by candlelight. <laughs> Rosen at the Pantages Theater. Absolutely beautiful. I also got to see the out-of-town tryout of Frozen in Denver, Colorado. This is the pre-Broadway production. So I had, I think, the full Broadway cast. Like, I had Casey and Patty and everyone. And I believe that seeing this show was the very, very first time that I ever met a subscriber, which was like beyond mind-blowing and so cool. A Little Night Music at the Walter Kerr Theater, starring Bernadette Peters and Elaine Stritch. I love A Little Night Music. This is what obviously made me fall in love with the show because this show is never produced. Seeing Bernadette Peters on stage was a masterclass. I, I think she's one of the most brilliant performers to ever walk the planet. And she was spectacular as Desiree. Let's hit two from the Pasadena Playhouse. I got to see their production of Little Shop of Horrors starring George Salazar, MJ Rodriguez, Kevin Chamberlain. This production was brilliant. It was gritty. It was very pared down. It was modernized. The other show I saw at the Pasadena Playhouse was one that they imported, which was Pirates of Penzance. But this wasn't just any regular production of Pirates of Penzance. This was Pirates with a ball pit in the middle. There was an open bar as part of the set where you are encouraged to get drunk with the pirates during the show. The entire theater was the audience, like you were sitting on the stage, like on the plank. And if a cast member pointed to you, it meant that you had to get out of the way because they were about to run through and do some action. It was the craziest production I have ever seen. So much fun. Oh! Also one of the very first shows that I ever got invited to. I'm now noticing like how many of these shows are so special to me a, a lot because of their connection to my work and, and you guys and YouTube. That's so cool. Oh, These are both from the revival of The King and I at Lincoln Center starring Kelly O'Hara. I got to see this right after she finally won the Tony for Best Leading Actress. I have long, long, long been a Kelly O'Hara fan when she came out, spoiler alert, because I think this production of King and I is now available through PBS. I'd highly recommend it. She makes this incredible entrance on a boat. Like uh, the stage moves out over the orchestra pit, kind of into the audience, and this boat rotates so the bow of the boat is over the whole audience, and out walks Kelly O'Hara in this incredible gown. Everyone gave her a standing ovation. Like, I'm tearing up thinking about it right now because it was that magical of a moment. I'm also PMSing, so I promise I'm not crazy. The Drowsy Chaperone at the Marquee Theater. So this was from my very first trip to New York ever, and this is the second Broadway show I ever saw. I wish I could see this show again now knowing what I know. This trip is actually what made me fall in love with Broadway because the very first show I saw on this trip, let me see if I can find it. Heyo at the Majestic Theater. Phantom of the Opera. Seeing this show is what made me fall in love with Broadway. I had done two musicals prior to that and it was just kind of a fun thing I did because all my other friends were doing it. I saw Phantom of the Opera and my jaw was on the floor the whole time. I think I was nine? And at intermission, I turn to my mom and I go, I wanna do that. So the third show that I saw on that very first trip when I was nine and fell in love with Broadway, of course. I love Wicked. Wicked also holds obviously a very special place in my heart. Who did I see? I think I saw Eden Espinosa, I want to say, because it was pretty early on in Wicked's time. As you can see, these three playbills were definitely before I knew what stage dooring was. <laughs> Light in the Piazza at the LA Opera. I love Light in the Piazza so very much. It's one of my favorite scores out there. I am dying to play Clara. This show is not produced enough. This was actually the first time I ever got to see this show live, and I 
I was basically crying the whole time. I got to see the pre-Broadway production of Amelie also over at the Amundsen. This is, I think, before I was doing YouTube. But I got to see Pippa Sue as Amelie, which was so cool. Her voice has just such a, a unique, clear tone. Another production of Wicked at the Pantages Theater in Hollywood. I saw Eden Espinosa and Megan Hilty. A legendary combo, holy cow. I wish I could see that today. Bright Star? Over at the Amundsen, Carmen Cusack came back just for the LA run of the national tour, so I got to see her as Alice. It is so, so fantastic. If you don't know Bright Star, go listen to it right now. I cannot recommend it enough. Welcome to the run! We've been going through playbills for about two hours now, and my camera finally died. Switched over to the vlog camera. Come From Away, the first national tour over at the Amundsen Theater. First off, this show is incredible. It is inspiring, it is heartbreaking, it is heart healing. It's a show unlike any other that I've ever seen. I'm dying to see this on Broadway just because I, I want to see it again so badly. I'd probably put it in the top five best productions I've ever seen in my life. This is actually a show I would recommend to listen to right now. It's one of those shows that kind of restores your faith in humanity. Like I mentioned, I got to go see this over at the Amundsen. They invited me over. They actually invited me to a pre-show event a couple months before the show came. I got to go to the official residence of the Consul General of Canada here in Los Angeles, so I was on Canadian soil for this event. I got to listen to an acoustic version of Me in the Sky performed by the creators of Come From Away while hanging out with the real Captain Beverly Bass. In 1986, the first female American I got to meet the mayor of Gander. It, it stands out in my mind as one of the most beautiful, incredible nights that I was so honored to be a part of. I am so grateful that I got to be part of that night and truly a once in a lifetime experience. I'm getting emotional thinking about it right now. So I am so thankful that the Amundsen Theater and Center Theater Group invited me over to be part of that. That was a delightful, heartwarming, exhausting trip down memory lane going through all of the playbills that I have. This was so much fun and a really great way to just kind of geek out for a little bit or a long bit. I'm sure this video is very long. Congratulations to the two people still watching. If you're still watching, comment the little chick emoji, the little chick in the egg. I love that emoji so much. Also, of course, if I haven't said it enough times today, I have a vlog channel if you want more content and you want to hang out with me over there. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out and I'd really appreciate it. Also, let me know what you thought about this kind of longer chill style of video. I'm curious because this is kind of more of what I watch on YouTube, but I know it's not for everyone, so... I don't know, hit me up, let me know. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.